gonna shove it. Yeah! He's gonna shove it. Shove it! Ring of the Hawk is back by popular demand. People have been batting me with requests to see Terry Funk's run in ECW. Now this is the third time of covering ECW on the channel after I did the run of Chris Jericho and Rey Mysterio, but I was left a bit confused with the Ring of the Hawk rulebook. Ring of the Hawk rules state 30 or less matches on main TV shows and pay-per-views. The Swim Walk Kid on YouTube pointed out that this will potentially cause some problems when covering Terry Funk. This is due to the way that ECW run their shows. They had a TV deal, and they also ran pay-per-views, but they also ran special shows as well. These were released on a video at a later date. If I included all of those matches, he'd have had 61 matches altogether, and I'm all for bending the rules, but I think that's going a bit far. Now I've been using this website called Cage Match Database for all of these episodes so far, and by selecting TV and pay-per-view only, it doesn't include any of the supercards where his best matches were. So this Ring of the Hawk episode will be a pay-per-view and supercard special, and I make it 19 matches. So that's what we're going with, if you don't like it, shove it. I play by Rob Terry rules, remember? Also, thank you to Paul Riccio over on Patreon who asked for this video. If you want a bit of extra Hawk, I just uploaded a video over on Patreon on Lex Luger in TNA. So if you want to make the Hawk Squawk, sign up today. And of course, if you know a wrestler who can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, ha ha, shove their name in the comments, Jack. Okay, okay, Terry Funk at ECW. Will he be our first day or will he make me spray? Funk makes his ECW debut on a supercard called Battle of the Belts. It's not being included as a match today in today's video as it only seems to be fan cam stuff. Funk won and threw up afterwards. I wonder if that's a sign of things to come. Match 1, Super Summer Sizzler 93. Texas Chain Match, Eddie Gilbert with Paulie Dangerously versus Terry Funk. Eddie Gilbert starts out trying to get away from Funk. Maybe he shouldn't have signed up for a chain match if he was scared of him. They finally start doing something with Gilbert sending Funk out the ring, but Funk immediately yanks him out the ring to the mat. In the ring, Eddie hits a scoop slam before Funk runs from him and creates some distance. Eddie gets back on him with some fists in the face wrapped in chains. Funk is the next one to land some chain-related offense. He follows it up by hanging Eddie Gilbert over his back. Funk thinks he can touch the four corners now, but he only manages three before Gilbert smacks him one. There's a sign in the crowd saying smear the queer, pretty much the only sign in our small crowd tonight. They slowly brawl around the outside of the ring, I think Funk's busted open but the pitch is too bad. Gilbert puts the chain around Funk's face to pretty much knock him out. Gilbert then touches the first three corners before Funk wakes up. He hits Gilbert with some more chain related strikes. This kind of match isn't really for me, I've never really liked chain matches and the poor video quality makes it even harder for me. Later in the match the referee catches a shot from the chain and they have to change the referee over. Funk almost touches four corners before he gets booted in the nutsack by Gilbert. Funk hits a few chain punches to knock Gilbert out and then he touches the four turnbuckles. But it's not over. The new referee said he didn't see the fourth post touch. Gilbert smacks Funk with a chain and then gives him the pile driver on the chair. Gilbert touches the four corners and it's over. Look, both men tried hard. It's not their fault. I find these matches hard to watch. Todd Gordon comes out and fires the referee. I give it a D. Now let's move on to something we can actually see. And by the way, if you're finding this hard viewing at the moment, the video quality does improve as it goes on, so maybe skip the first half if you don't like it. Match 2, Ultra Crash 93, Bunkhouse Tag Team Match. Funk and Stan Hansen versus Abdullah the Butcher and Kevin Sullivan. This match is going to be Tom at the top 10 wrestling ugly. Funk hits Sullivan with a chair and then they sort of brawl in the scaffolding on the outside of the ring. What am I even looking at here? Abdullah's caving Funk's head open, but due to the quality, I can't tell if he was successful. Sullivan climbs up the scaffold and Funk gives chase. Terry Funk teases falling, but he doesn't, so it's a waste of time. It's just four large men slopping into each other time and time again. Funk traps Abdullah's massive forehead and neck in a chair and yanks back. His partner Sullivan just watches. What a great partner he is. Funk takes a real beating here as he gets hit time and time again with a hammer. Terry Funk's apparently bleeding so badly that he can't see and he starts clubbing the referee. He certainly has it in for this referee. The match is thrown out because Eddie Gilbert is here again, hitting Funk with a chair. One of the ugliest matches oh, I've ever best. seen, and I'm not talking about the video quality, it's an S. Match 3. Well, this one seems to officially be an NWA pay-per-view, but go easy on me, it's hard to follow the match list from the early 90s. ECW TV title in a steel cage match. The champion Jimmy Superfly Snucker vs the challenger Terry Funk. Snucker starts out throwing Funk into the corner, which seems to snap the top rope. Funk is the first one to taste the steel. Snooker hits a pile driver. This move seemed to be a lot more common back in the day. 
Snooker tries to climb up the cage with Funk waking up just in time to stop him. Snooker almost hits Funk out of the cage and he smacks him with Funk falling on his nutsack. Snooker rubs Funk's head against the cage with a young Joey Styles on commentary saying his stomach can't take it. If only his stomach knew what was to come in ECW. Funk seems to fire up from seeing his own blood and he starts throwing Snooker into the cage time and time again. Terry Funk follows it up with a pile driver. What else would it be? Funk hits a bunch of headbutts which Snooker no sells and he hits one of his own. Snooker body slams him but he misses the following top rope headbutt. Funk starts frantically crawling on his knees and hitting headbutts. They both fight on the top and Funk falls on his head behind the ropes. Snooker then gives him a swinging net breaker and a bat breaker but it's not over. Funk and Snooker seem pretty even, they just keep smacking each other into the steel. Funk tries to make his escape but Snooker has his leg. Funk eventually scores a headbutt to knock Snooker down and Funk wins the match in the title. Terry Funk flips out of a chair after the match. Then he starts throwing them around the arena. After the match, Terry Funk says that his new ECW TV title means as much to him as the WCW heavyweight title. He says he plans on ending his career with dignity. If only he knew how much longer his career would go on from this. Decent match, it's a C. And stuck it around his neck and started to choke him. Do you think... Do you think that he would be afraid of that? Why, you damn well right he would. Because he would be afraid for his life. That's what he would be afraid of. I am the toughest son of a... You damn right I am. Match 4, ECW Holiday Hell. ECW Heavyweight title. The champion Sabu versus Terry Funk. A very slow start to this one. Funk slams Sabu on the table on the outside and then hits him with a chair. Straight after he follows up with a pile driver which almost is a free but Sabu gets his foot on the ropes. Funk gives him another one but he gets distracted by Paul Lee on the outside. Sabu now has a chair and he hits a dive into Funk. Sabu gives him the split legged moonsault which Funk kicks out of. Terry Funk then dives onto him from the ring apron which the camera certainly doesn't do justice. We get a double down in the ring following Funk's headbutt and a table is shoved in the ring. Sabu chucks him into it a few times. Out of nowhere, Sabu whacks the referee and throws him into the table. The crowd love it. He hits a big moonsault to the outside of Funk's entourage. Damn, Sabu whips Funk into the table, but this time Funk crashes the top half of the table over the ropes. Sabu tries to put him away of a moonsault with Funk on a flat table, but Terry dodges it and it makes a sickening thud noise. Terry Funk puts on a spinning toe hole, but now Paul e is in the ring and he hits Funk with his brick phone. There's chaos in the ring with loads of run-ins and then the lights go out. As they come back on, Funk is on top of Sabu and the ref counts three. I think Shane Douglas did something, I don't know. So Funk is now the heavyweight champion. Funk really did nothing here, he just took a battering. Fair play to him for taking a battering though. <laughs> Sabu has lost the plot and he does a moonsault onto an empty table for no reason. It's weird seeing Funk as a heel, it's not what I was used to growing up during the Attitude Era. At least he's the champion now, so that's cool. Match 5, the night the line was crossed, ECW heavyweight title triple threat. Shane Douglas vs Sabu vs the champion Terry Funk. Douglas and Sabu fight for ages before Funk arrives. I think they didn't realise quite how long this match would be. An hour to be exact. Funk arrives 5 minutes late and he immediately launches the franchise out the ring. They brawl in the crowd with Douglas getting the best of it and then they come back to the ring. Sabu is apparently out of the match because he's too injured to continue. Funk sends Douglas out the ring again and this time he actually gets the better of him. He hits a pile driver on the floor but the camera angle is terrible. Funk brings him back to the ring with a DDT. Funk hasn't even attempted a cover though. He picks him up and nails a second DDT. Still no pin. Oh wait, there it is. Sherry, who's Shane Douglas' manager, gets his foot on the ropes. They head out of the ring again where Funk hits a third DDT, this time on the floor. Chairs start flying from everywhere into the ring and the Funkster stacks them all up. He hits the fourth DDT in five minutes into the chair. Funk seems to have hurt his back on that one and he can't make a cover. Douglas pretty much no-sells it and climbs straight to the top rope. He hits a bit of a splash to Funk's back. Douglas now hits a back suplex and he's pretty happy of his work. He makes the cover for a two. Next up they head to the back of the arena. Douglas throws him into a ladder and it falls on Terry Funk. Franchise is a resourceful man and he uses a shoe as a weapon now. That gets Funk back in the ring where Douglas hits a DDT of his own. Not many moves in ECW in 1994 it seems. Out of nowhere Funk almost rolls him up. Terry Funk then tries a spinning toe hold, but Douglas turns that into a pinning predicament. Just a two. Douglas smacks him down as Funk is busted open. Then there's a ref bump. Funk gets smashed into the corner turnbuckle so many times he looks like he's been in a car crash on the A38. Funk suddenly gets a second wind and he brings Douglas to the floor with his brawling and gives him a slap. 
Yet again, they leave the ring and they go into the crowd. An announcement is made on the tannoy that 30 minutes have now passed. Funk drops Douglas on his nutsack and he goes back to the ring. Funk seems to be losing the plot as he's swinging at everyone. He eventually stops that and starts choking Douglas with some tape. Then Funk hits a shoulder block but he falls away out of the ring. Sabu now returns with Paul Heyman, so it's a triple threat after all. Terry Funk goes for a bit of a wander in the crowd whilst the other two fight. He starts throwing chairs around and then he gets on the commentary desk. He starts swearing at his two challengers and telling them to come and get him. This would have been an awesome moment, but the other two ignore what he's saying. Funk then heads back to the ring. He tries to lock up with Shane, but he keeps falling to the floor. Terry Funk does manage to get the spinning toehold on the injured knee of Sabu. 911 then takes the referee so Paul Heyman can hit Funk with the brick phone. Funk starts crawling around on his hands and knees like a dog headbutting his opponents. I love it every time I see that. Terry Funk gives the franchise a net breaker and another on Sabu. Heyman breaks up the pinfall. This causes middle-aged and crazy Funk to take the referee out. Later on, Funk gets Douglas in a sleeper hold whilst he's also got one on Sabu at the same time. And there's no need to rhyme. No one goes to sleep though and Shane clotheslines Funk out the ring. In an overly long match, the highlight for me is a botched Sabu springboard moonsault. Sabu is the only one who can get away with botching and we can all enjoy it. Funk is pretty much out of the match now and he's helped by his little friends, the Rotten Brothers. The brothers decide to destroy the other guys, but this match is still going on at the 45 minute mark. Funk does eventually return, but he doesn't look much better from his rest. Anyway, Funk's more interested in attacking the referee of a headbutt. Terry Funk finally attacks his two challengers, but at this point it doesn't resemble much of a match. Terry Funk tries to headbutt them and then he collapses. Sabu scoop slams him. Okay, I was wrong. He botches twice and can't hit the springboard. Instead, he goes to the top to hit a moonsault. Funk is in real trouble here as Douglas gives him a pile driver in the ring and he throws Sabu on top of Funk. The ref wakes up, but Funk kicks out at two. Sabu starts splashing Funk, but he can't get a free either. The franchise gives Funk a leg drop and a suplex. Sabu splashes them both, but it's just another two. Terry Funk tries to wake up and do something, but Sherry gets on his back. Funk throws her off and hits a suplex. Funk gets that boot from earlier on, and he boots Sabu in the nutsack. The champion is in full control as it's announced that there's three minutes left. The video quality then gets even worse, but we're almost there. Shane hits a big crossbody from the top on Sabu, but his boot knocks Funk down too. Funk isn't hurt and he tries to cover everyone. The ref is rolled back in the ring. He's taken a real beating tonight. No one can win after 60 minutes and they get a standing ovation from the crowd. It's declared a draw. Funk cries in his interview after the match. First of all, there was no need for this to go on for 60 minutes. From Funk's perspective, his character work was crazy good and I enjoyed it to my fullest feathers. I'll give him a B for his efforts. Following this, ECW did a War Games type matchup on a special shirt, Ultimate Jeopardy 94. Douglas put a bag over his head and hit the pile driver to become the new heavyweight champion. Can't find the full match though, so shove it. Match 6 tag match, Sabu and Bobby Eaton with Paulie and 911 versus Terry Funk and Arn Anderson. Bit of an ECW WCW crossover for this match. Sabu takes the fight to Funk on the outside and slams him into the steps. Sabu gets him in the ring and hits a big splash. It's almost over already. Sabu takes Funk into the corner and Bobby Eaton gets in. He punches him out the ring. Anderson has to come to Funk's aid on the outside and helps him into the ring. Sabu throws him straight back out of the ring, but through a table. Bobby Eaton also smacks him in the face of a chair on the outside. Sabu's in the ring again now and he creams him with a chair. Funk looks like he's having a seizure. Sabu continues his chair offense and he dives off the chair into Funk. Eaton is back in now, but he's an idiot and he punches Funk and allows him to tag Anderson in. After a few minutes, Funk suddenly sneaks into the ring and hits a pile driver against a chair on the ropes on Eaton. He's not legal though, so Anderson carries on for his team. Sabu drop kicks him out of the ring just after, so Funk just comes back in. He hits a slam and goes for a moonsault but completely misses it. Sabu gets a two on Funk for the leg drop even though he isn't legal. Sabu now tries the moonsault but his actually hits and he gets another two. Funk isn't too hurt and he snaps off the power bomb for a two count of his own. Terry gives Sabu a net breaker and lies back on him for a two count. He should have tried harder. Funk suddenly starts dancing with happiness and he hits a DDT on Sabu. He can't cover though because Eaton starts attacking him from the outside. Funk ends up on the outside, a place that he's very familiar with, where Sabu dives down on him from the ring. I think Sabu came off worse from that one. Funk's exhausted now and he tags Anderson in. Later in the match, Funk and Eaton fight up into the hawk's nest. Funk gives him a pile driver up there. The public enemy appear and they attack Terry Funk. Anderson fights them off with a chair. Funk does make it back to the ring eventually, where Sabu tries a spinning toehold. Funk reverses it into a small package, but it's just a two. 
Funk's knee seems to be crippled now and Sabu starts smacking it with a chair, it's not going to help it. Anderson saves him but then Funk smashes his own partner with the chair. He doesn't seem to care about Anderson. Funk starts trying a spinning toe hold again but Sabu smashes him in the face at the same time. Anderson comes back into the ring and decides to turn against his own partner for that missed chair shot and hits him multiple times in the leg with his chair. Sabu puts on the half Boston Crab and Terry Funk eventually gives up. A pretty hardcore match with an interesting blend of styles. It was okay as I see. Match 7 ECW Hostile City Showdown 94 Tag Match The Public Enemy vs Terry Funk and Dory Funk Jr. Terry looks ancient and it's only 1994 here, who would have thought he'd be in the Fed 5 years later? And his brother looks twice his age somehow. The match starts with a shoving match between Terry Funk and Rocco Rock. Then he tags his brother in at the request of Public Enemy. Rocco gives up because he gets smacked and tags Johnny Grunge in. Dory also has a smack for him. Terry Funk comes in now and he knocks Grunge down and lugs him out the ring. This is one of the slowest matches I've ever seen, I hate it so far. The Funks eventually hit a double team punch on Grunge. Terry then picks him up and hits a powerbomb. I always think he's going for a pile driver when he does that. He throws Johnny Grunge out of the ring who starts trying to chop him. Terry criticises him for not chopping hard enough. The match gets hardcore now as Terry hits a chair shot to Rocco Rock. He tries to get back in the ring where Terry throws a chair at him. Rocco Rock manages to get a chair now and he takes out Terry. Now Johnny Grunge starts smacking him with a chair. I still hate this match, it's just constant chair shots with no one seeming to be that hurt by them. They disappear into the crowd where I can't even see them. Good. Dory's left to fend for himself for a while. He does pretty well to be fair. The camera eventually finds Terry who's now busted open and struggling to get to the ring as usual. The match is shoved out after about 10 minutes as Paulie and 911 destroy the referee. Terry does a fake count for his brother so they fake win the match. They keep brawling because some crazy person thinks I didn't get my feel here. Well I did, I never want to see this match again, it sucks Sonny oh, Siaki's no. ass, it's an S. Terry's brother did more than he did here, at least they hang Rocco Rock off a balcony by his feet. That bit was okay. Match 8, ECW Heatwave 94, ECW Tag Title Match, Barbed Wire Tag Match. The Funk brothers who have cleverly put some clothes on will take on the Public Enemy who climb into the Eagle's Nest. The Funks try to throw chairs at them. Public Enemy do eventually get to the ring despite their fears. Rocco Rock starts out with a couple of body slams on Terry Funk. They try to throw Dory into the barbed wire but he slides away. Terry does okay against Rocco Rock but he's distracted by Johnny Grunge beating up his brother. The brothers try to send Rocco Rock into the barbed wire but he slides under. Dory gets a beat down on the outside so Terry comes to his rescue again with a steel chair. Terry Funk is the first man to feel the barbed wire as Flyboy squashes his face into it. Unfortunately for Rocco Rocky misses his splash and he feels it worse than Terry did. The match spills outside again with Terry rubbing Rocco Rock into the wire. Johnny Grunge gets busted open and this seems to fire him up. The ref tries to save Funk from the barbed wire but Grunge won't let him. Funk eventually turns it around on Rocco Rock and gets him hung up on the wire. Terry's trouser suspenders are trailing behind him like a turd in the toilet. The Funks start dominating as Terry hits the power driver as his brother hits the butterfly suplex. Terry Funk then delivers another one to Grunge. Then Terry asks for a chair and the crowd start throwing them through the air. They're all smacking down and raining on top of them. It's crazy. Funk hits another power driver into the stack of chairs. Can you imagine doing a dangerous move like that whilst people are throwing chairs at you? The PA system screams to stop throwing chairs. Rocco Rock is still alive at this point. I have no idea where Terry's disappeared to. Somehow Johnny Grunge is up now. How is that even possible? Grunge hits Dory with some wire cutters and he keeps smashing him with them. Terry's now returned from his little hibernation. The public enemy hit him with a trash can. They start cutting the barbed wire down with wire cutters and they wrap Terry Funk up in the barbed wire with a trash can sandwich between it. They smack a chair on it and make the cover for the free. A bowling shoe ugly match which defied the laws of wrestling logic. Funk is back up after the match using himself as a battering ram, okay that bit's pretty funny. Funk tries to rip off the barbed wire like a Hawk Hogan t-shirt but it doesn't work. The fans launch more chairs into the ring whilst Funk is still wrapped up like a TNA Christmas tree. The public enemy are buried in a sea of chairs. Fair play to him for putting himself through that, especially at his age. Personally this match wasn't for me but I'm sure some people did enjoy it. That chair throwing was a cool spectacle though. Funk can have himself a C for putting himself through that and a big moment in ECW's history. Match 9, Hardcore Heaven 1994, Terry Funk vs Cactus Jack. Two friends colliding here. Cactus gets the mic and says he thinks the crowd would like a scientific match from them tonight. The crowd boo and scream, we want blood. They talk about their past and then they shake hands. Cactus chops him and then Funk shakes his hand for it. Funk chops him back and throws him out of the ring. He starts smacking Cactus with part of a table, so I guess we aren't doing a scientific match after all. 
They fight in the crowd where I can just about see Funk using a chair. God, I can't wait for the later Funk matches where there'll be better production quality. Jack hits some sort of dive onto the guardrail at Funk. They both make it back to the ring and Jack throws him face first into the canvas. We get that cool Cactus Jack spot now where he gets his head stuck in the ropes. Love that one. Suddenly the public enemy jump Terry Funk. Not these guys again. They try to help Cactus win the match but he doesn't want to make the pin. That makes them go after him too. They squash Cactus on top of Funk and make a fake pinfall. They then try to clothesline Jack out the ring but it doesn't go well. The crowd chant bullshit. Funk and Jack grab a load of scrap from under the ring. They leave but then they just come back with the public enemy. Funk is using frying pans and he struggles to hit the pile driver on Rocco Rock on the frying pan. This match is over, it's ruled a no contest, it sucked, it's an S. Oh, then the crowd pelt the ring with chairs but it's even more intense than the first time. Both Funk and Foley bail from the ring. Another cool spectacle, but that isn't really something that I can claim Funk did, is it? Match 10, ECW Hostile City Showdown 95. Terry Funk who has a shirt saying Cactus My Ass versus that very man. Hopefully this will be better than the last match. Jack invites Terry Funk to join him in the crowd. Funk is walking slowly up a hill so Jack jumps him from behind. They crawl onto that stage where Rey Mysterio beat Hooven to. Funk turns it around hitting Cactus with a chair. They climb a bit higher and Funk throws chairs at him now. Funk tries to climb down but he gets hit with a Cactus chair shot and goes onto a table. Jack climbs up higher and drops the elbow but Funk moves and he crashes through the table. Terry Funk brings him back to the ring area and throws Cactus into the crowd barrier. Cactus Jack gets all hung up in the rail as Funk smashes him with a chair. They both get in the ring where Jack seems to have woken up a bit. He throws Funk into a table time and time again. Cactus then gets a toilet seat from the crowd and puts it around Funk's head. It's a bit of a shitty spot as nothing happened. Cactus jumps off the apron now squashing Funk into a chair. He's not hurt by it and throws Cactus off the ring apron to the floor. I felt that one. A bit later Cactus gets a trash can which is actually full of trash. That's novel, never seen that in wrestling before. Rubbish spills everywhere as he hits Funk. A glass bottle was in the trash can and Funk uses that and turns it around by smashing Jack with it. Funk continues rubbing the broken glass on Foley. This goes on for a while as the crowd turn fairly quiet for ECW. Funk starts slapping him I guess because he's crazy. Mikey Whipwreck appears and tries to help Cactus and so does Hat Myers but Funk treats them both like jobbers. Terry Funk uses a chair on Foley's legs and then attempts a spinning toehold but Cactus turns it into a pin, it's just a two. He then gets straight up and DDT's Funk into the chair. The ref counts the three from outside the ring. The Sandman appears with a cane after the match and he hits Foley with it. He keeps putting petrol on Foley and hitting him with a stick. Funk comes back with a flaming branding iron and a big fireball shoots up as he lights Foley. Foley doesn't seem to be very flammable though and Funk keeps trying to catch him on fire but it doesn't work. This is crazy. He's just waving it around next to fans. Cactus eventually manages to steal the branding iron back and Funk runs away. This was the first match on this list that felt like ECW that I knew. Not the old school stuff, but the hardcore ECW. A good brawl with moves that you felt and that ending was crazy. Funk can have a B for this one. Match 11, November to remember 95, tag match. Tommy Dreamer and Terry Funk versus Cactus Jack who's wearing a WCW t-shirt for some reason and he teams with Raven. Just like the last match, Foley invites Terry to the outside. Funk obliges and then Cactus gets straight into the ring. Probably the smartest thing he's ever done. Dreamer and Funk have to regroup. Cactus is distracted by the crowd chanting pink shirt cactus so our guy sees the opportunity to get into the ring. Funk takes Jack out of the ring and he slaps him. Funk starts smacking Cactus with a chair in the crowd then he takes Raven down throwing a chair at him. Good shot. Funk empties a garbage can of weapons into the ring and now we've got all our weapons we could ever want. Funk and Dreamer take out Stevie Richards who is Raven's little friend. Then they shove him in a shopping cart and shove it into the ring pole. Nutsack first. All four men are now in the ring for the first time. Funk uses a snow shovel on Foley. Funk attacks the referee using a dustpan. He really hates the ECW referees, doesn't he? He also smacks Raven in the nutsack with a golf club. Raven and Cactus find a way to turn it around as Raven hits Funk with a VCR player. Cactus now gets some sort of weapon and uses it to stab Terry Funk. He's really carving him open. Cactus now has an Eric Bischoff t-shirt on. Dreamer pummels Eric Bischoff's face. I wish I could punch the leader of the Grey Crew. Funk has been pretty quiet since he was carved up but now we see him throwing a shopping cart on top of Raven. Funk does make it back to the ring but he shouldn't have bothered as he gets a double arm DDT onto the chair. Foley makes the cover but there's no ref. Referee Bill Alfonso then comes out and tries to count the three but Funk kicks out. Dreamer completely destroys Raven and Terry Funk makes the cover for the three. Cactus is a bad loser so he attacks everyone. From Funk's perspective he barely did anything in this one it was all Dreamer so I'm giving him a D. Funk would spend the next year over in Japan and would not actually reappear in ECW for a full calendar year. 
Match 12, ECW November to Remember 96. Dreamer and Funk vs Shane Douglas with Francine and Brian Lee. The crowd are so happy to have Terry Funk back in ECW. The Undertaker will start out with Dreamer, so they'll have to hold their excitement for now. Funk has enough of Douglas pretty quickly and tackles him down and takes him out the ring. Francine distracts Funk as I'm sure she did to a lot of guys and it allows Douglas to hit him from behind with a chair. Douglas tries to smack Funk in the crowd but it has little to no effect. Later in the match, Dreamer and Funk are dominating and both their opponents get sandwiched between the guardrail and the ring. We actually get a DDT from Funk now, it's been a while since I've seen an actual move. He then looks to throw Douglas on top but Shane just sort of falls on him from the top rope. Terry Funk now leaves the match for a long time. I'm not sure this is what ECW fans wanted to see. He returns later and clotheslines Douglas for a two count. Funk starts losing it and he throws the ref into the crowd. Dreamer is out of it now, so he's in a handicap situation. If you think about it, it's actually pretty smart from Funk taking the ref out now, as in a handicap situation he's likely to get dominated and pinned. I'm proven right as Shane Douglas hits the pile driver, but guess what? There's no ref. Brian Lee and Shane do a spike pile driver, but still no ref. Douglas then hits him with a single arm DDT, so I'm surprised Funk has a neck left at this point. Terry Funk tries to escape, but they won't let him. It gets worse for Funk now as he gets nailed with a pile driver through the table on the outside. Dreamer's now back, so the match continues despite Funk being dead on the outside. Well, I was wrong, because Funk does make it to his feet 10 minutes later. Jesus, he hits a moonsault into the crowd, hitting his two opponents. Funk gets back in the ring, smacking the Undertaker and Shane Douglas with a chair. He's going nuts. Funk tries to use the spinning toehold, but Faker stops him. Under Faker looks to choke him out, but Dreamer saves him with a television camera. Terry Funk hits a DDT on Brian Lee to end the match. Props to Funk in this one, he took a lot of damage and abuse, so it's yeah, an man. A from me. He also won the match, which is always nice. As with almost every match in this video, the heels are bad losers and Funk gets a single arm DDT after the match. They're saved by the Pitbull who had his neck broken with the same move by Douglas. There's supposed to be a match at ECW House Party in 1997, but that specific event isn't online. I believe the match was added to an episode of Hardcore TV, so here it is. Match 13, House Party 1997, Terry Funk vs Brian Lee. Funk already looks half dead for this one. Lee starts out ripping open Funk's tights and smashing him with a chair in the knee. Lee gets him in the ring now and hits a pile driver. Funk wakes up now and they both exchange blows. Funk gets him outside the ring and gives him his own pile driver on the chair in the concrete. I know which one I'd rather take. Under Faker and Funk are pretty even as they fight around the ring on the outside. Out of nowhere Funk dives off a chair with a leg drop sort of sending Lee through a table. That isn't enough to keep Faker down, he gets Funk in the ring and he just lugs him through a table in the corner. He stamps on it to add insult to injury. Funk manages to fight back but then he gets jumped by Candido and Shane Douglas. This enables Lee to chokeslam Funk through a table on the outside. Under Faker makes the cover to end it. Well that's probably the best Brian Lee match I've ever seen so Funk must take some credit for that one. Under Faker starts running him down on the mic after and Funk does some more amazing character work. Brian Lee describes himself as the legend killer. They both start headbutting and beating each other while sat down. Another cool moment in this video. You don't fuck with Terry Funk. It's a C. Match 14, ECW crossing the line again, 1997. Tommy Rich vs Terry Funk. Funk has the most peaceful entrance music I've ever heard here. It's so relaxing. That soon changes as the crowd chant, you fat fuck at Tommy Rich. The match starts in the crowd as Tommy Rich was unhappy with the crowd for calling him fat. He throws Rich into a chair and he's already bleeding. Rich misses a dive on the guardrail and Funk hammers him with a chair. They actually get in the ring now. Rich can't even walk. I guess his knees can't take the weight anymore. Funk sets up a chair and lectures him about proper diet. The lecture seems to wake Rich up who keeps punching Funk whilst he falls out of the ring. Funk gets beaten up by Tommy Rich now for quite a while. It's pretty slow moving. Rich keeps hitting clotheslines but Funk continues to make it to his feet. He then almost beats Funk with a DDT. He hits a second DDT but he still can't get the free. Rich decides to DDT the referee, so at least Funk didn't have to do it in this match. I would not like to be a ref in ECW. <laughs> he does it again. Funk is now lying on a table shaking. Rich assaults him with a chair and now it's the table that's shaking. That thing's gonna give way in a minute. Hasn't he even watched Botchamania before? The crowd look annoyed that this assault is going on for so long. Funk does eventually fight back while sitting down with headbutts. He hits a low blow and then he puts on a spinning toehold for the tap out win. Not a good match. I'm not sure why he had such a hard time beating Tommy Rich. Not really anything to enjoy in this one, isn't oh, it? I lied. Funk's music was great, but that's it. Match 15, ECW Cyber Slam 97. Brian Lee and Raven versus Terry Funk and Tommy Dreamer with Beulah. If Funk can pin Raven, he'll get a title shot at the next pay-per-view. Raven immediately tags Brian Lee and so Funk also tags out. Brian Lee is the odd man out here because nobody cares about him. 
Dreamer softens up Raven later on and then he lets his mentor try to get the pin, but Raven scrambles away and gets Lee back in. Lee gets battered by Funk, but Raven still doesn't want to face Funk. Terry does manage to catch Raven, but on the outside of the ring, and he smashes him with a chair. Later on, Raven gets him in the ring and he hits some nut-related offense. Raven's on the mic taunting Funk. This seems to fire the old man up. Funk kicks Raven over time and time again and then puts on a spinning toe hold. Raven's tapping, but the ref misses it. Underfaker breaks it out of a trash can. Lee then mashes Funk's head around 20 times with a trash can, but Funk won't stay down. Dreamer tries to cover his mentor up to stop the beating. A team of doctors get in the ring to help him. Raven keeps screaming at him to stay down, but he won't. Pretty cool moment. Funk is eventually forced out of the arena by the team of doctors. It was a bad match with a cool finish. I'm giving it a B for Funk's superior selling and acting. He really makes you care about everything he does. The next match that I was unable to find was at Hostile City Showdown 1997. It was against Brian Lee, so I'm not losing any feathers over it. And if you are, shut up or I'll smack you one. Match 16, ECW Barely Legal 1997, triple threat match. The winner will challenge for Raven's world title later in the night. Stevie Richards with the BWO versus the Sandman versus Terry Funk. Funk and the Sandman style chopping Stevie as I guess they're trying to eliminate the weak link. Despite that, he almost rolls the Sandman up straight away. Funk tries a spinning toehold on the Sandman. He gets taken out by a flying clothesline by Richards. Sandman and Stevie now take turns dropping elbows on Funk. This annoys Funk and he hits four net breakers on Richards. Stars on commentary can't believe that he kicked out. Sandman throws a ladder in the ring which takes out Funk. Sandman follows up smacking him with a ladder but he can't pin him. Sandman and Funk both decide to climb the ladder. Jesus, Funk does a moonsault off the ladder but it doesn't fly far enough and he barely catches Richards. Terry Funk's down for a while now as any normal man would be but his next action is pushing Sandman and Richards off the ladder. Funk starts doing an aeroplane spin with the ladder and he keeps spinning even when his opponents are down. The ladder soon becomes his enemy though as Richards dives from the top causing the ladder to seesaw into Funk and Sandman's faces. Stevie hits the Stevie kick on Funk but he kicks out. Later on Funk hits a big suplex on Stevie just as the Sandman throws a trash can into his head. How are all the ECW wrestlers such good weapon throwers? Sandman and Funk suplex Richards onto a trash can. Then they give him a spike pile driver. Somehow Stevie still kicks out from all of these moves. Richards is eventually eliminated after a powerbomb. We're down to a one on one now. Funk starts out whipping the Sandman with a streamer wrapped in barbed wire. Sandman is no stranger to this. He wraps himself in barbed wire and keeps crashing into Funk. Sandman drops his leg on Funk on top of a trash can, but Funk kicks out. For some reason, Richards is still here and he super kicks the Sandman with a trash can on his head. Funk hits the moonsault on the Sandman to the trash can, and it's a free. Really fun match. Funk can have a B for that one. Match 17 will start right away. It's for the ECW World Heavyweight title, the champion Raven vs Terry Funk. Raven attacks him without letting him rest, so he's a bit of a dick, I guess. He dropped toe holds Funk onto the chair. Funk doesn't stand a chance. He looks like a dead man. The doctors come out again to try and stop the match. Raven doesn't let it happen this time. Funk starts swinging blindly. Raven hasn't even been hit at this point. Raven pulls him out of the ring and slams a table onto him. He sets up Funk on the table and crashes through him from the ring. Raven takes the doctor out. He wants to win this one convincingly. Some of Raven's nests appear and a man called Reggie Bennett hits a bad looking powerbomb. Raven has a mic and says he's going to end Terry Funk's career. Dreamer, who's been on commentary this whole time, says he can't take any more and he takes everyone out. Dreamer also nails Raven with the DDT. Funk makes the cover, but it's apparently a two count or a three. I don't know. The timekeeper got confused and rang the bell. Then Funk just carries on anyway and rolls Raven up of a small package. And that is the convincing three. Funk is now a two time ECW heavyweight champion. Amazing moment for our guy and everything that led up to it was great too. I'm going to give this an A because of the storytelling oh, yeah, emotion and what it represents. Funk defended his world title in multi-man matches for the next month or so, but I can't find any of that. Match 18, Born to be Wired 1997, which is appropriately named because it's a barbed wire match for the ECW World Heavyweight title. Sabu the challenger with Bill Alfonso vs Terry Funk. Funk takes Sabu down with a single leg and then tries to throw Sabu into the barbed wire, but he puts on the brakes. Sabu tries to do the same to Funk, but he falls to the floor. Funk gets up and he hits a net breaker and a pile driver for a two count. Terry then gives him a DDT. Sabu is still able to block the barbed wire with his hands. Sabu then gives him a hurricanrana for a two. Funk kicks out of authority and then Sabu is the first to taste the barbed wire. Funk whips him into it now. It looks like an ECW game on the PS1. Brutal spot now as Funk drops Sabu on the barbed wire and nuts act first. Funk is relentless and he throws him into it again. Terry Funk tries it again but Sabu reverses it and Funk fills the wire for the first time. Sabu hits him with a chair whilst Funk's caught in the wire. 
Now Funk's face is in the barbed wire, Sabu crashes down on top of him as the crowd roar. That's just a two. Sabu tries to run off a chair now, but Funk moves and Sabu gets the crash and burn. Funk is now in full control and he hits the net breaker across two chairs. This wakes Sabu up and he springs to his feet, but the fists of Funk are too much for him. Funk's punches are brutal. Alfonso also gets a barbed wire and then Funk drops Sabu gut first on the wire. Funk is too distracted attacking Bill Alfonso. Sabu gets the wire cutters just like in the last barbed wire match we saw and he hammers Funk. RVD runs into the match and he also attacks Funk. RVD gets Funk wrapped up in the wire on the outside and gets him on a table. Sabu gives him a leg drop through the table. Tommy Dreamer turns up a bit late to save his mentor. You should have come earlier Tommy, he's pretty much dead now. Wait, Funk kicks out of that one, we're not done yet. Sabu decides to wrap himself in the barbed wire and he puts Funk through the table again. Funk kicks out again. Sabu just thinks fuck it, we can't move now, we're so wrapped up in this barbed wire so he goes to cover him again and that is actually enough to beat him. Sabu is the new champion. That was a pretty oh, brutal yeah! watch, I have to give Funk an A for his efforts here. Match 19, final match, Hardcore Heaven 1997, three-way dance for the ECW heavyweight title. Shane Douglas with Francine versus Terry Funk versus the champion Sabu. Hoping this is better than that hour long one from earlier in this video. That seemed like a long time ago. Funk doesn't want to get in the ring and he wants to rest on the outside so the others decide to go and fight him. They work together to send him into the crowd barrier and Sabu throws a trash can at him. Sabu gets a two back in the ring. They continue to work together. Douglas suplexes Sabu onto Funk for another two. Sabu gets yet another two off a slingshot leg drop. Now Funk gets an atomic drop and a springboard clothesline from Sabu. He isn't going to last long if they keep double teaming him like this. Sabu dives off a chair at him in the corner for yet another two. Eventually Shane turns on Sabu during a pin and wallops him in the back of a chair. They fight for a bit amongst themselves before Sabu hits a springboard body press on Funk. Then he hits an acai moonsault to take Funk out on the outside. Something rare happens now as Funk works with Douglas to put Sabu through two chairs. Funk gets hit in the head for chair and he calls Sabu a motherfucker. He keeps blocking his chair shots and then he smacks Sabu one. He also gives him the pile driver for a two count. Now Funk and Sabu work together sending Douglas into a guardrail. The alliance doesn't last long as Sabu throws the crowd barrier onto Terry Funk and then drops the leg. We get a cool throwback now to their original match as all three men get a sleeper hold put on them. Sabu gets the best of it and later on tries a moonsault the ropes but the chair gives way. Terry dodges his second attempt. The Funker now hits triple headbutts on Douglas and he collapses. Sabu repeats the blown spot from earlier but manages it this time. Sabu wants to put Funk through a table but Todd Gordon saves him for some reason. He pays for it though as Sabu puts him and Alfonso through the table. A ladder gets introduced to the match now with Sabu battering anyone that moves. The Sandman interferes and takes him out. Somehow Sabu kicks out. Then he's covered again and this time he's done. Down to a one on one now. Funk has completely lost it as he keeps slamming a trash can into his own head time and time again. Douglas almost puts the crazy man away of belly to belly. He also hits a pile driver. Francine gets involved, slapping Funk, and then Dory Funk suddenly appears in the ring. He clears the ring and Funk almost rolls up Douglas. Shane Douglas now dominates with suplexes. They start fighting on the apron and both men go for a table, not sure who got the worst of that one. They come back to the ring and Douglas hits yet another belly to belly. Funk kicks out. Douglas hits a third and yet again Funk kicks out. He tries a fourth but Funk reverses it into a small package. Douglas just about kicks out of that and then he gets up and snaps off yet another belly to belly. That one's enough for Funk and he's done. That's the end of the match. Game over. What a match. Far better than the original one. I'm giving Funk an A for this one. Oh, yeah. And do you know why that is? Oh, yeah. Well it's because the blend of hardcore, brawling and wrestling was even here. And that's the best way to do a hardcore match in this Hawk's opinion. For what it's worth. Wow, at the time of recording this, I expect this is the longest ever episode of Ring of the Hawk. I think these matches totaled about 10 hours of footage to watch. Those two freeway dances with Sabu and Douglas were an hour and a half just for the two of them. It was a bit of a chore to sit through those early matches with poor video quality, but it became enjoyable. So all that's left now is to grade him. Well, reach for your bricks because it's a B, not an A. Let me explain why. I already bent the rules to get him on this show. I only watch pay-per-view shows where the best match action would be, and that's bound to have meant his grading was higher than other people's. I cannot award a title to someone who was debatable in the first place if he should be on the show. It was obviously great though, so don't spray blood in your panties. His promo work was out of this world, some of the best I've ever seen, I'd love to see someone recreate that. I'm gonna get some sleep now, because someone has asked me to do another drunk review soon. You people are gonna be the death of me, but if I ever meet your girl I'll put her across my knee.